I would request Mr. Roger to start his talk. I would like to introduce his profile. Mr. Roger is currently the Director of Marketing and Product Management for Herman's Telematics Business Unit, part of the Herman Connected Cars Division. Prior to Herman, Roger was VP of Marketing and Product Management at the Honeywell Aerospace Light Aircraft Avionics business. He spent the majority of his career in various marketing and product management roles at HP in the US and Europe. Mr. Roger Jolis. Microphone on? OK, there it is. Thank you. Well, it's great to be here in Bangalore. This is my first time uh, uh, here in uh, this part of India. I've spent some time in the north. And you know, the, I've caught a lot of flack about the picture that's in the brochure. My colleagues sent it in. Uh, and when I came in to meet some of my colleagues here in Bangalore that hadn't seen me in person before, they said, you don't look like your picture. So just in case, I've brought my glasses so now I can look like Tom Cruise. Does that look better? OK. So um, I'll put on the glasses I can actually see with here. I'm going to probably be pointing at the uh, left or to your right screen as I'm uh, pointing out some of the things that we're going to be talking about. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is an area that we haven't heard about yet uh, at the uh, uh, Connected Vehicle um, Conference, and that is antennas. We've heard about the applications, we've heard about hardware, we've heard about uh, algorithms, we've heard about sensors, a lot of things that are coming into Connected Vehicles today. But the most important piece that we haven't heard yet is the ears. We see, we feel, we can, we can uh, um, sense speed, but if you can't do anything with that data, it, it doesn't amount to much. So the antennas or the ears of the connected vehicle are going to be very important. Now, I've been playing around with the antennas for many years. In fact, uh, I've started playing with antennas as a kid. Uh, as, a, as an amateur operator, and I've learned that antennas, of course, is technology, but antennas is also um, a little bit of black magic. And my colleague uh, in the antenna space would say, well, it's also art, and he's right. Combining the technology, the art, and some black magic, you can finally get to antennas that actually work. And uh, in the days when I was working with antennas uh, on the lower frequencies, you know, you could pretty much uh, um, experiment and not get yourself hurt, but the higher frequencies, uh, it's microwave uh, frequencies and uh, a lot more uh, to be concerned about. Now I'm going to start by talking a little bit about where we are coming from at Harman. Um, we've been in actually involved in connected vehicles for many, many years. We're known really as an infotainment, a digital cockpit supplier, a supplier of acoustic systems. But we've been involved with connecting vehicles. Whoops, wrong button here. We've been uh, involved with connecting vehicles for um, actually since 1994 uh, here. And it was mainly connection of the head units. So bringing in things like real time traffic. And then further down the line, as we connected uh, uh, through tethered mobile phones through Bluetooth, we could bring in additional media content like music, sometimes apps. Uh, moving through the progression of the mobile network, uh, we brought in uh, the first GSM in 2004 with uh, BMW. Uh, in 2008, as we moved to 3G, the third generation network, we brought in uh, UMTS. Uh, it was actually embedded in a head unit. Uh, 2009, um, we had what was uh, to become a standalone uh, TCU as the TCUs began to service many, many more applications than just um, uh, the infotainment. Uh, 2010, we brought in Wi-Fi hotspot into the car. Of course, today, everybody has a Wi-Fi hotspot on their Samsung uh, Galaxy or Apple phone. 2013, with the progression into LTE and higher uh, bandwidth uh, networks, we introduced uh, an LTE uh, solution. And now, as we're moving into 2019 to 2025, we're going to be introducing the first LTE system with what's called carrier aggregation, which is bringing in multiple channels that data can be run in parallel. We're also going to be the first OEM uh, supplier that is going to be bringing in uh, 5G. The fifth generation network is going to be rolling out already this year. Uh, it'll be a fixed point network, and they're going to be rolling it out in the, in the US, in Japan, and in Korea. But we'll see it begin to hit the mobile capabilities in 2020. And about that time, Harman and Samsung together will be launching some new 5G systems. So we've been in it for a long time, and we've got a lot of experience at this. Now, about a year ago, uh, we 
um, completed the acquisition of Harman by Samsung. It was a huge acquisition and something that was strategic for both companies. It brought in a lot of synergies before the, between companies. But the thing that's uh, most important for our current discussion is the fact that we're able to draw in technology from each of the Samsung divisions. And for uh, the antenna supply area, uh, Samsung Mobile has been doing uh, a lot of work in antennas. They have a very, very deep uh, bench in antenna design, testing, and certification. Why? Samsung produces over 400 models of mobile phones every year. Each one has a different antenna. Uh, and they, they ship more phones than anybody, about 640 million phones a year. So they have this deep antenna technology that we're able now to, to, to utilize, to leverage into the automotive space. Now, how, is, how are antennas actually uh, assembled together? So first of all, you've got to start someplace, specification. Sometimes we've got an existing antenna. Uh, we review it, uh, we do some simulations, there's some very advanced tools. The simulations are usually done on banks of supercomputers, you converge on an actual uh, solution. Um, we do uh, some schematic research on how you would actually uh, put it together, you know, what, what do the geometries look like, and then we put it into the chambers and test it. So it's a complete um, uh, process. The chambers are very, very um, uh, elaborate, these are called anechoic chambers, they have uh, different chambers for different kinds of, of, of tests, uh, tests for GPS, tests for LTE, tests for electromagnetic um, uh, interference, and they're very expensive, very uh, um, uh, complex. One of the chambers that uh, Samsung has that we're able to actually work on is a chamber that simulates a moving vehicle, and this allows us to actually test to see how the antennas and the TCUs work in, a, in an environment where you're moving past base stations or you've got buildings that block GPS. So it's one of the first in the industry to be able to do that kind of simulation. Now, why are antennas important? Well, the car is becoming pervasively connected. We can have up to 14 antennas on a car. You count through them. As we move to higher bandwidth LTE and 5G, we've got four or maybe even eight antennas on, uh, on the TCU. We call that MIMO, multi-in, multi-out. You've got GPS, that takes a special antenna. You've got uh, V2X, so the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications, vehicle-to-infrastructure, that will be an enabling technology for uh, the autonomous car. We've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, we've got the infotainment antennas, which are AM, FM, uh, digital audio broadcasting, and in some um, regions, also satellite radio. And then you've also got the services antennas, things like uh, remote keyless entry, uh, uh, wireless toll collection, as well as things like a home link that allows you to open up uh, your, your home or your garage door uh, from, from the car. Uh, the, some of these systems require um, a gain or have to have a directionality on the antenna. Um, we have to worry about efficiency and reliability as well as cost. Uh, they're all drivers for what the antenna can do. Uh, some of the uh, uh, older technologies are, are becoming obsolete, and I'll talk about those in a minute. One of the most important things that's becoming a concern with all these antennas is aesthetics, because the more antennas you have, the more elements have to be radiating from the car, and it can really, really look ugly. So how do you solve the problem? One of the ways is to try to harvest technology from adjacent uh, sectors of the business, and that's what we've been doing at, Harm, at Harman and Samsung. Of course, Samsung has access to mobile-type antennas, but we've been partnering with third parties in the aerospace sector, which is an important uh, uh, user of multiple antennas on an aircraft. Today, you'll see antennas embedded all over the car. You'll have window antennas, you'll have antennas that are in the bumper, antennas that are going to be on the roof, sometimes they're in the back deck underneath the uh, rear window. Uh, it's, it's, it's really a mess, and um, so what, is, what, what happens when you do that? First of all, it's very complex to install and maintain these kinds of antennas. Every car has to be redesigned with a new place for the antenna. It's less reliable. You've got connectors which can be subject to mechanical vibration and unreliable signal uh, communications. You've got long coax that can uh, weather and can chafe and can cause problems. It's cost intensive because you've got all these different antennas, each one needing to be manufactured. And of course, aesthetically, it can be challenging. 
So we have, first of all, partnered with a company that's in the aerospace uh, sector, a company called, uh, that, that is uh, putting together something for the stealth fighter. Everybody know what the stealth fighter is? Okay, so this is a, an aircraft in the U.S. military that is invisible to radar. And one of the most important pieces of stealth fighter is that it doesn't reflect radar. And in order to do that, all the surfaces have to be uh, somewhat flat. And so we've got um, this antenna that was tested on uh, the stealth fighter. We're bringing it over with the third party to uh, the automotive side. And here's what it looks like. When it's installed, this is in the back of an SUV. It's in the back quarter of the roof. A very efficient antenna, very broadband, and it has a, um, a radiation pattern that is ideal for um, moving cars. If you look at how it's uh, constructed, uh, several layers. Starting on the bottom, you have a cavity. That cavity is actually a resonant uh, piece, resonant with the frequencies you're using. The next level is a circuit board, which has all the matching network on it, the coils, the capacitors, resistors that will phase and match each of the antenna elements to um, the, its particular use. So you can do directionality, you can do gain. In between, there is a, um, a dielectric where the antenna is embedded, and the actual antenna is unique. It's what's called a volumetric antenna. This is a three-dimensional piece, and I can only describe it as looking like the top metal piece of a mechanical pencil, and it's embedded down inside that uh, dielectric. Uh, and then on top, you've got a radome that does weather protection on it. So the vehicle, you would open an aperture, say on the roof of the vehicle, the antenna is embedded in the aperture, it's connected to the vehicle body, and then the plastic non-conductive aperture uh, weather protects it. This antenna, and I've got one up here, I'll be happy to show you when we're finished, can accommodate up to uh, 17 different antennas, ranging from low frequency all the way up to uh, microwaves. Okay, and how do you work at low frequency with such a small antenna? It's five and a half inches square. It actually will be matched to radiate and resonate with other geometries on the vehicle. For example, A-pillars or luggage racks, and that gives you the extra length that you need uh, in order to be able to cover AMFM operation, which requires a longer element. We're also working with some of the Samsung technologies. This is a Samsung conformal antenna. When I talk about conformal, I mean there's no um, extrusions from the vehicle. This uses a little bit more conventional antenna technologies uh, coming from the mobile phone sector, and they're embedded in, in a medium. Um, you can see the squares in there. Each of those are antenna elements. Um, it's got uh, a very uh, high level of, of isolation, so you're not interfering from one to the other. Uh, we're able to design these customized for each vehicle and for the services that are required, and it can cover Wi-Fi, LTE, um, Bluetooth, as well as GNSS. Uh, it can also do, optionally, a V2X. But again, this sits underneath the body panel uh, and is flat. Uh, we can also do a lot of matching of this based upon the uh, uh, structure of those elements uh, to ensure that we have got the right uh, radiation patterns uh, and efficiencies. Um, in terms of character characterization, we do a lot of work. Um, an antenna guy would uh, love to look at the reams and reams of uh, tests that we're able to come out with, Smith charts and radiation diagrams and matching uh, diagrams. I won't take you through that boring uh, work because it's uh, very specialized, but you can see we do a thorough amount of characterization on these antennas to make sure that they are operating not just in the chamber, but also eventually in the vehicle so that they're optimized. Um, how do you mount them? Where do you put the antenna? Well, it's a single antenna, and what we're working on now is something we're calling our top shelf smart telematics mounting system. Uh, we're working with several automotive manufacturers where we're taking a shelf that goes in the top 20, the rear 20% of the vehicle, it can actually house the TCU and two antennas. <clears throat> there will be a, um, an opening in the roof there that uh, uh, accommodates the antennas 800 by 200 millimeters, and of course a non-conductive plastic cover over it that uh, will shield the antennas from weather. But this is a very effective way to do things. We're in the process now of working to ensure that uh, thermodynamically uh, there isn't a problem. Obviously, you've got heat generated from the uh, TCU as well as heat that comes in from the sun in, in, uh, in hot uh, climate areas. Um, 
The next, way, the next uh, position we're going to be working on is something we call smart antenna, taking all these concepts and combining it into one item. That is an antenna and the electronics together. The benefits are uh, it's more efficient in terms of design. Uh, you can couple the, the module digitally to ECUs in the vehicle, to the head unit and to other ECUs without having to worry about RF being in the vehicle. And it's got a lot uh, better reliability. The challenges, of course, we have to make sure it can be built. Each antenna is different for each car. We have to make sure it's built so that you don't have to recertify the antenna and TCU each time. So we're looking at the techniques there. As I mentioned, mitigation for thermodynamics. Isolation, since everything's on one uh, piece, we've got to make sure that uh, we've isolated uh, LTE from, uh, from GPS and Bluetooth from Wi-Fi, et cetera. And then, of course, uh, we need to make sure that it's installed in the vehicle so that it's aesthetically pleasing. And that includes making sure that if it protrudes into the passenger compartment, that it uh, can withstand um, uh, crash testing. So a lot of stuff going on here. So I'm going to conclude here. What is our role here in telematics? We have been involved, as I said, since 1994. Our business is now expanding, not just TCUs, but vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle, antennas, software, and even services. Uh, we're a key participant in the main uh, forums, including 5GBP, we're, uh, sorry, 5GAA. We're on the uh, board of 5GAA. We work with Samsung on 3GPP, uh, Society of Automotive Engineers, as well as the IEEE. Our goal is to be the number one tier one supplier of connected car solutions, and uh, we're making some progress on that goal. And we will lead by doing two things, organic innovation as well as working with uh, innovation from, thir from third parties and uh, uh, adjacent markets so we can bring some of the innovations in. Thank you for your attention and any questions, I'll be happy to answer them after the show. Thanks.